Hello and welcome to the first part of a series of videos where I show you how I built my double-sided modular baseboard for my scale X trick. In this particular video I'm going to go through the planning and the design of the baseboard. So this is what I'm going to show you how to build. Uh, this is one of the modules of my scale X trick track. It measures about 1.6 meters by uh, 0.6 meters and it stands approximately uh, 500 millimeters off the floor. Uh, in this first part, I'm going to show you why I chose that size and how I designed my track. And then in later parts, I'm going to show you how to do the woodwork, uh, how to fit the legs and how to install the track so that it fits nicely. So now I'm going to show you the process I followed to design my modular scale electric table. I had four main requirements that I had to follow. First of which that was that the uh, the whole setup had to fit under a bed for storage. Um, I've got a single bed, a narrow single bed at that, which is 1.7 meters long um, and 0.75 meters wide. So when all the modules are stacked up, it had to slide under there. The clearance I had was uh, 22 centimeters. So I, I had to make sure that all the modules would fit under that. The second uh, requirement was that the layout had to be double sided because what I want to do is on one side I want to have a slot car or scale electric track and on the other side flip it over and uh, I've got a, a you know I want to install a model railway just for you know maximum use of space and uh, fun. <laughs> um, on my scale electric track I want to have a pit lane that's essential I think that's a really really quite a nice feature of uh, modern scale electric that you can have a pit lane and it certainly adds to the fun so that's something that I wanted to consider and finally, I already had the Scale Electric C1404 uh, Le Mans set, so I wanted to reuse as much of that track as I could to minimise uh, the cost of having to buy additional track. So, dimensions. I settled on 1.6 metres by 0.6 metres. Um, several reasons for this. One, it would fit under the bed quite neatly. The space I had was 1.7 by 0.75, so it would fit quite neatly with a little bit of wriggle room at each end. Each end. But also it fitted into the space I have in my room to set up in this sort of L shape that you can see on the screen. Finally, uh, by using 1.6 by uh, 0.6 metres, it's possible to cut the sheets of 4 millimetre ply that I'm going to use from a larger 8 by 4 sheet, um, you know, which you can get from a, from a timber yard. So the next job is to design the track that's going to go on the baseboard. Uh, you might have, if you've already got a lot of track, you can just lay the track out on the on the baseboards already and, and make a circuit. But I only had a limited amount of track that was already in the C4, C1404 um, set, and that, that was quite limited. It was only really extra long straights and um, radius two curves. Um, so by using software, I was able to make the best use of the space um, and also to use all the track that I already had in the C1404 to minimise me minimize the amount of additional track that I had to buy. So I do add a few restrictions uh, on my layout. I, I did consider using underpasses and bridges because uh, I think that adds a really really neat feature to the, um, to the, to the layout and I think it looks really good. But the gradient uh, was going to make it quite hard and the, the timber work was just going to make it impossible. So I had to have a flat um, flat circuit. The other thing that I had to consider was I wanted all of the uh, track joints to be uh, at right angles or in line with the um, with the board joints to make sure that when the when the track was stored there wasn't masses of track overhanging because I, I didn't want to to uh, leave the tracks to set or to damage during storage. So the software I used uh, to design my track was Ultimate Racer um, and they they offer a trial package. The website's on the screen uh, and the links in the video below. Um, I've not used many scale trick design software. I've, I've used a lot of uh, model railway uh, design software and a lot of CAD software. And I found um, Ultimate Racer to be really, really intuitive, really easy to use. Um, and, uh, and, and it was free. The only restriction is that um, if you do want to save and you've got more than I think it's 20 uh, pieces of track, then they do ask you for a small fee. But if you just leave your computer switched on overnight, then you can come back to it when you've got your design sorted. So I've opened up Ultimate Racer and this is what you face with. I'm going to go to the design tab down here and this is what you face with, this kind of bleak, blank screen. 
Um, I've installed the RS1 plugin, uh, the link's in the description, and that gives you all of the additional digital um, track and some of the track which is missing from the standard installation, things like the extra long straight and the, the, the 90 degree uh, R2 bend. So the first thing I'm going to do is, this is a personal preference, I'm going to change the um, the, the appearance of the track to be bold, I just like the way it looks. And the second thing I'm going to do is change the, the grid to 20 centimeters um, and show the minor grid and set that to uh, one, uh, sorry, to two um, to, to give me the, the grid pattern that I, that I want so I can check um, that the track fits on, on my baseboard size. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is start at the beginning, so start at the start, so I'll just find that. Here it is in my recently used. Now there is no um, ARC Pro uh, base um, uh, track, sorry, uh, but that's one and a half straight. So I'm going to position that sort of roughly in the middle, uh, and then I'm going to um, add two half straights to make it um, to make it like a, uh, a an Arc Pro set, which is one and a half. Um, one and a half long. So there we go, I'm just going to make sure, because I'm going around the other way, I'm just going to twist those round, one and two. Right, there we go. So I have done this before and I'm sort of following it, so it will be quite quick, but um, I go straight away into this sort of kink chicane. Um, so, oh, whoops, wrong way. So deselect that when you're adding new components. And they, the good thing is they do snap into place like that. So we're into this first chicane. Uh, next thing to do is add a 90 degree R2 corner. I've had loads of these uh, in the C1404 set that I had, so I'm keen to use these up. So there we go. So you've got to see there, I've gone onto the edge of a, a board or a virtual edge of the board. So I'm just gonna plug in one of these um, quarter straights, whoops, uh, quarter straights here. So just twist that around so it goes on snaps into place. So I'm onto the second board now. You'd have to imagine where the second board is. There's no way to do benching. Um, but uh, here we go. I'm adding the, the next the next corner in. So it's almost like a, a very wide hairpin corner. Um, the next one is I need a quarter straight and then a half straight. So there you go. Now because I'm going to keep this on one board, I am going to now go into a hairpin, but to sort of lead it into and to, to make sure um, that it fits neatly onto the baseboard, I'm going to have an R4 corner and then an R3 corner. So this sort of tightens it on itself to make it, to, well, aesthetically, but also makes it slightly more of a, uh, a driving challenge. You can put, pull the trigger and, 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 and gently slow down in there. So it does do a little bit of braking. So there's no, um, 90 degree R1 bend, so I've had to make it up out of four, three and four, so you can control, uh, control, uh, copy and paste, so control V, control C. Um, so I'm going to put my, coming out of this corner, I've got a R3 uh, and another R3, uh, and then I go into a half straight, and then my first changeover. Annoyingly, this is the wrong round way, so I use this little brown thing to spin it around. There we go, into place. Another one of those common, <laughs> common uh, 90 degree R2 bends. Let's get that into place, snap, there we go. Uh, and now we're coming up to where the, the board joins. So I'm gonna plug in a, what is it, a half straight, so copy and paste that, spin it around plug it in and then I'm going to put another quarter straight in there. So the reason for this is it just gives a neat break over the board. And then I'm, what I wanted next, um, I did buy a pack of um, R3 bends and they come in a pack of eight so I was keen to use those up. Um, but I did also find that it, when I'd used R3 bends it got a bit close to the, the track that you can see there that it's running. It will actually touch that sort of R2 bend. So I bought a pack of R4 bends just to give it a little bit of clearance. Um, so we're going all the way around. Oops, there we go. So that's a really nice sweeping blend. You can actually, if you've got really good magnet traction, you can go flat out through that bend. 
Um, into my next changeover, this is one I had to purchase, it wasn't in the set, the other one was, but I've got two changeovers on this track. And then into, yes, another sort of, uh, what's it called, quite shallow chicane. The reason for this is it, it does actually miss the um, the control, the, the Arc, Pro, uh, Arc Pro control, but um, doesn't show it on here, so I'll just move that out of the way. Uh, into a uh, short straight, I had a couple of these. Spin this round, there we go. Into place, so that, that is a fishing game you actually can go completely full power through, which is really quite cool. Um, there's my next uh, board joint. So I've done two boards, fits neatly. So now I'm coming into the, the pit lane um, section. So I've got another uh, quarter straight either side, symmetrical. So I'm onto the, the final board now. Right, so next thing to do is put the pit lane. Now, I said I wanted a pit lane, um, so here we are. The, the, these sets are uh, these these bits of track are modelled um, in, in with the RS1 plugin. So I'm using a pit lane oh, pit lane entry. Here we go. So you can go into the pit lane there. So just snap that into place. And we need to fill the um, the other track up with these. Oh, I keep doing this um, with these half straights. Well, not half straights. These cut straight, single straights. Should I say one lane straights? So you need three of those on one side, uh, and obviously on the other side you need the others as well. So get rid of that. Um, then I put in a uh, half straight here. Now there is no model for um, the extra long straight, and I had two of these in the set. So. Although it's shown two straights here in the um, on the on the on the picture on the on the design, I have actually trimmed those down. You can watch them on my other videos how you do it. It's quite simple. All you need is a craft knife. As a bit of an impulse, I bought um, this swipe chicane hairpin, which actually is pretty cool. But it does make it quite hard to um, to, to to incorporate there because it's quite a large um, section of track for for quite a small layout. This is not a big um, scale electric layout that I've, I've got here. So I need the other one. Oh, chosen the wrong one there. Let's get rid of that. Uh, plug the other one in. Spin it around. It's extremely confusing when it appears the wrong way up. There we go. So I'm out of the hairpin. Uh, now I need the another half straight. There we go. And the next one is the uh, pit lane exit. So we'll just one yeah there we go so this is the pit lane exit and lo and behold it almost joins up you can see there's a, a little bit of a gap but it's not huge uh, and the track is more than flexible enough to handle that so copy and paste in the new uh the, sorry the, the the um the one lane straights put in this extra large thing now you can see there that's it, you know, again, it's it's got this blank lane which I'm not using, but you know I can't do anything about that. So to complete the finish, so so to complete the um, pit lane, I'm just going to use these inner R2 uh, curves. Now I used a couple of the. Um, oh, it's annoying where it it does that, so I'm just going to move that down to the bottom. It doesn't seem to do it when I do it at the bottom. Oh, this, here we go. Um, so I did use cut down versions of R2 90 degree bends. Again, there's an, another one of my videos that you can see how I did that. It's very simple. You just need a basically a craft knife and a block. Um, so there we go. That is my layout set. Um, I'm just going to line it up on the lines there. So you can see that it does fit um, three, um, three squares high or 12, um, six, six total. But you can see that there it, it, it does fit. Um, and eight lane, uh, eight blocks wide as well. So you, you can wriggle it in to, to make it fit my, um, my baseboard. So yeah, that's where the baseboard join there would we'll, we'll go there. And then again, um, the other board there. So I've, I've got this sort of elongated L shape. So this is just making sure that, that all the track does, does fit the, um, the baseboard design that I have. So that's it. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to do the uh, timber work, so how to do the framing and how to fit the, 
the board top and some of the techniques and considerations that I used for that. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next video.